Okay, uh, I want to take a minute and walk through a quick introduction to how to use build changes locally. Um, I'll just show you how it works, go through a couple of the options, and then probably refer you to the documentation for more details. But the first thing we want to do is make sure we're in the correct directory. So here I am in my analytics uh, repository, but I'm not yet in the virtual environment. So to get there, we need to add a run, we need to call the run dbt option. And that will put us in the correct virtual environment where the new uh, jumps reside. Okay, so now that I'm in the virtual environment, I can call the build changes job. So for, for setup here, I have made a change to the date detail source and the dim date models. Uh, prep date is in between those models. And you'll see that it should, all three of these models, the date detail source, the prep date and the dim date models should run when I call build changes. So to do that, now that I'm in the virtual environment, it is simply make build changes. You can see that down here at the very bottom of my screen. And you know what? Hold on. Let's make this even easier. Maybe. There. Make build changes. Um, and so once I execute this, it will run the same lines of code that are run in the CI job. It will clone, it'll it'll clone these tables and it will run the build command on these tables. We'll show you that now. One, while that is processing, one thing that to note that this is, will do, um, it will show you, kind of give you a log of what's happening. It'll show you the user input, so any of the options that you've included. And, and it will kind of, and then it will tell you what the resultant is of your options plus the um, inbuilt options. And then for each step, it will give you the full DBT statement uh, that it's executing. So if you wanted to begin to construct these on your own without using the build changes command, uh, it's fully transparent there. So you can kind of reinvestigate it and break it apart and see what it's doing. Should take just a minute to parse. First, it will clone. And then it should run the build command. One thing to note is that this selector, the contiguous list, um, that's one thing that's going to imply that it will find all the models in between any of the changed models. And that is available anytime, um, but it does require these variables be passed as well. So the upstream list and downstream list be passed if you wish to use the contiguous selector. So now it is cloning. And you can see these tables already exist locally for me, but it attempted to clone um, all three of the models. And then immediately went into the build command. Should these fail, should the clone command fail, it will abort and not try and build, just like it would in the CI job. Um, so if you get in a warning or an error and it fails in that step, um, it should it should it should be pretty clear, hopefully, that it is error where it's erroring. Which runs the build command. Uh, the build command includes all of the tests related to the models, so that's why you see it uh, processing so much. There are a lot of tests on these models, um, but it you can see that it processes. It'll run all all of the models. So. And that's it, and that's done. Probably the most common thing you may want to do with the command is one. Um, probably the most common thing you'll want to add is a different target. So if you needed to run at a larger warehouse during development, and you can do that by passing the 
target variable and supplying it the name of the target you would normally pass it um, with a dbt command. There are several other commands that can be used to um, options that can be passed for this. Um, they're just like the same, they're the same ones that are available in the CI job. And so I'll refer you back to that documentation, the handbook for what each of those options do.